Okay, um, you are watching the North Carolina Final Exam Math 2, uh, the release test, and my name is Amy Work, and I'll be walking you through some of the videos, um, or some of the problems on this video. So the first question, it says which expression is equivalent to this expression right here. So we're going to use our laws of monomials to simplify that, and then see which answer uh, matches up. Okay, so the first thing, when you have an entire expression in parentheses raised to an exponent, um, this exponent right here, we're going to go ahead and distribute that exponent out. Okay, if you have a coefficient like this, number 8, you're going to take 8 and you're going to raise it to that coefficient. Okay, and then for each of your exponents um, on the variables that you already have over here, you're going to multiply those exponents. Okay, I'm going to write out every little step. You may not need to do this when you're doing the problem on your own, and that's fine. Okay, so you're multiplying each exponent by that exponent that's outside the parentheses. Okay, so in my calculator, if I raise 8 to the negative 2 thirds, it's going to end up giving me 0 0.25, and I know that 0 0.25 is 1 over 4. Okay? Alright, then when I multiply my exponents for w, I'm going to end up with w to the negative 14 over 3, and then x to the 10 over 3 y to the negative 2, and z to the 6. Okay, now each of these exponents that has a negative has to change levels. So w and y both are going to have to go down um, to the bottom level so that those exponents can become positive. Okay, and this one actually doesn't have to be there, it's just a placeholder, so now you can look to see which one of your answers matches up, and it would be A. Alright, for our second one, a marathon is roughly 26.2 miles long. Which equation could be used to determine the time, T, it takes to run a marathon as a function of the average speed, S, of the runner, where T is in hours and S is in miles per hour? Okay, so if I'm looking at my answer choices, I'm no noticing that they're all talking about time, okay? I know we're talking about distance, speed, and time, okay? I know that these three are actually related, right? The speed of an object is how far it travels, the distance, over the amount of time that it takes, right? Okay? Like when you drive a car, if you drive 80 miles in um, one hour, then you were traveling 80 miles per hour, right? Okay, so that speed is distance over time. Now, all of my answers, right, all of these say t equals something. So I'm going to rewrite this equation so that it's in terms of t. So I'm going to multiply t on both sides to get t out of the denominator. And then I'm going to solve or divide by s to get t by itself. Okay, now, so this is the equation I'm going to use right here, and I'm going to look for any information I have and plug it in. So I know that the marathon is 26.2 miles long, and that's the distance, so I'm going to plug that in for the distance. Okay, and if you'll notice, that answer is right here. All right, number three, the time t in hours that it takes x people to plant in trees varies directly with the number of trees and inversely with the number of people. Okay, so I'm actually going to stop right there for directly and inversely. I have two equations for those. For direct variation, I have an equation that I use, and this is an equation that you should memorize. Okay, y equals kx, where k is a constant and x and y are the variables. And then you have inverse variation, which is also called indirect variation. And the equation for that is y equals k over x, where k is the constant, okay? 
Normally, problems deal with either direct or inverse variation. However, in this case, you're dealing both with direct and indirect. So we're actually going to com combine these two equations. Okay, and when you do that, this is called compound variation. Okay, so I'm going to use my direct variation equation, right, just like direct, but I'm also going to add the element that inverse have, where it's over x right there. Now each of these represents a different thing, so I'm going to do x sub 1 and x sub 2. Okay, so this is the equation I'm going to use right here on the right. Now it also tells me that the variables mean different things, so I'm going to write down what the variables mean. t is time, x is the number of people, n is the number of trees, okay? So now I need to go back and rewrite my equation using these variables, okay? So if I look back, it says the time in hours, so I'm going to start with time, okay? My k is my constant, that doesn't change. Okay, it varies directly with the number of trees. So that's going to go next to my constant because it's direct variation. And inversely, so that means divided by, inversely with the number of people. Okay, so this is the equation that I'm going to be using. Now, first I'm going to plug in the numbers that I have in order to find the constant. Then I'm going to rewrite my equation and use the new numbers to solve for um, what they're asking, which is the number of people. Okay, so I'm going to start out by saying, change colors here. Okay, start out by saying we have six people. Okay, so it, here's my equation. It says suppose six people, so that goes here, can plant 12 trees, all right, and I still have my constant there, in three hours. Okay, so I just plugged in the information that I had here. Six people, 12 trees, three hours. Now I'm going to solve for my constant, which is k, all right? So first I'm going to multiply both sides by six. going to cancel out there and I'm going to get 18 equals 12k. Divide by 12 on both sides and k is going to equal 18 over 2 which simplifies to 3 over 2 which is 1.5. Okay now I'm going to rewrite my equation using k all right because now I just solved for k so I know what that is. All right so my new equation is this right here. Okay, then I'm going to go back up and I'm going to look at the information and it tells me for the next part. So how many people, so that's what we're going to be looking for, how many people are needed to plant 28 trees in 5 hours and 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here and plug in, my time is now going to be 5 hours and 15 minutes. Now, that doesn't mean that I should do 5.15, okay? There are 60 minutes in an hour, right? So 15 out of 60 is actually 0.25, right? That's a fourth. So my time is actually 5.25. Okay, the number of trees that I'm planting are 28. And I'm solving for the number of people. That's x. Okay, so I just moved that up a little bit so we'd have more room. So I need to get x out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by x on both sides. Okay, over on this side, I'm going to have 1.5 times 28. That's going to give me 42. Okay, then I'm going to divide by 5.25 on both sides. And x is going to be 8 people. So that means I'm going to need 8 people to plant 28 trees in 5 hours and 15 minutes. All right, number four, the force acting on a charged object varies inversely. So there's our keyword, inversely. That means we're going to be using our formula here, okay? To the square of its distance r from another charged object. So I'm going to stop right there. So our two variables are going to be force and distance, okay? Force and distance. Now, x is my independent variable, y is my dependent variable, all right? So the force is going to be my independent variable. The force is like how hard you push something, right? And the distance that it travels based on the force, 
that distance is our dependent variable because the distance depends on the force, okay? Now, so basically in our equation right here, we're going to be doing the distance is our constant, whatever that is, we're going to figure that out, divided by the force. Now, if you'll notice in the question, it says that the force varies inversely to the square of its distance. That means that we actually need to square our distance right here. Okay, so they give us the distance, okay, and then they give us the force. All right, we're going to plug those in so that we can find what the constant is, and then we'll use the new um, information right here and the constant to solve, okay? So 0.64 is our distance. and our force is 8.2 newtons, okay? So now I'm going to solve for K. So 0.64 squared is 0.41. I'm going to multiply by 8.2 on both sides to get K by itself. And K is 3.36. So now I'm going to go back to my equation, right? So distance squared is our constant, which now we know, 3.36 over the force, right? Another way we could write that would be distance squared equals 3.36 over the force. All right, now they give us um, the distance. It says how much force, right, how much force, that's what we're looking for, would the object feel if it is at a distance of 0.77 meters, okay? So I'm going to take 0.77 meters, that's the distance, and plug it in for my distance, and then I'm going to solve for the force, okay? So 0.77 squared is 0.59, oops, sorry, that should be a 3, 6 over F. I have to get my variable out of the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by F. Okay, I'm going to move over here, so then 0.59 F equals 3.36, okay, to get F by itself, divide by 0.59, okay, and F, which is the force, is going to equal 5.69, okay, which our closest answer over there is going to be B. This has been part one, so I'm going to upload this, and then um, the other parts will be in a subsequent video, okay, video number two.